From a studio high above the clouds of the Okanagan Valley, this is the Cannabis Podcast. Exploring the world of Canadian cannabis culture, one toke at a time. Now, here's your host and bud tender, Gary Johnston. And welcome back once more to episode 88 of the Cannabis Podcast. If this is your first time joining us, well, I'm glad you came along for the ride. I hope you're interested in cannabis because that's kind of what we're going to be talking about for the next 30 or 40 minutes. And let me also remind you that this program is intended for those 19 or older in your jurisdiction, and it is intended for entertainment purposes only. Please consume your cannabis responsibly. On this episode, we're going to talk bud tenders. In fact, we're going to talk about bud tenders and what they consider to be their most annoying question that keeps popping up. We're also going to look at some cannabis-related New Year's resolutions. Lots of talk about whether New Year's resolutions are worth doing. Here's some ideas from a cannabis perspective for you. Also, a really interesting story that goes back to one of those urban myths that's been around for so long that cannabis impacts the brains of teenagers, young adults. A study has kind of determined that that's not the case. Plus, a story from Leafly on how you can get cannabis all across the country. Just talking about this today. In Canada, there's 10 10 provinces, two, three, four, five territories. I've lost count, actually. (laughs) There there must be 10, 12 now, right? Yeah, Nunavut and, and yeah, I think there's 12, two, four territories now. 10 provinces, four territories. Please don't double check on that because I could be absolutely wrong. And just because I knew it was going to come up later... (laughs) I checked. Canada is 10 provinces and three territories. I'm a little embarrassed that I actually had to check, but I haven't thought about it for a long time. So there you go. 10 provinces, three territories. My point being that it's different to get cannabis all across our country. And that has been kind of summarized in a story from leafly.ca. And on Cultivar Corner today, we are going to do three saints kush cookies. Very tasty proposition with lots of terpenes, and who knows what the effect is. And to stay true to what we talked about last episode, we are going to, I guess this, that would kind of be Cultivar Corner Part 2. And that is a review of Citizen Stash and the 12 Joints of Christmas. Not sure I'd buy that again. That and who knows, there may even be more. On episode 88 of the Cannabis Podcast. You know, I guess in reality, I'm the one who should know whether there will be more coming up. (laughs) But you know, sometimes, sometimes you just get stoned and you forget things. Let's start today with a brief story from Science Direct. Associations between adolescent cannabis use frequency and adult brain structure. A prospective study of boys followed into adulthood. Now, the highlights of this study, and the the study gets into minutia that's not worth listening to in terms of a podcast. So, of course, I will have the link at CannabisPodcast.com. You can dive into it yourself. It's not terribly lengthy. It's just really, really wordy and doesn't perhaps read really well. But what I want to concentrate on are the highlights. Cannabis use was tracked prospectively in adolescence with imaging in adulthood. Adolescent cannabis users did not differ in adult brain structure. Adolescent cannabis use is not associated with lasting structural brain differences. That's what I wanted to concentrate on. (laughs) Because that's what we have been told for so many years, um, especially those of us who might have started smoking cannabis while we were still in our teens. I'm not suggesting I'm, well, actually, I guess I'm speaking for a friend. (laughs) It's nice to see the highlights of this are again, and let's cover them. Cannabis use tracked prospectively in adolescence with imaging in adulthood. Adolescent cannabis users did not differ in adult brain structure, and adolescent cannabis use is not associated with lasting structural brain differences. Now, of course, there are some qualifications to this. How many people were involved in the study? It was a thousand boys. Boys completed self-reports of cannabis use annually from age 13 to 19, and latent class growth analysis was used to identify different trajectories of adolescent cannabis use. So you can dive into it for yourself. I've just found it an interesting study and an interesting result that I kind of always hoped would be the case, (laughs) but you never really knew for sure. From a studio high above the clouds of the Okanagan Valley, this is the Cannabis Podcast. 
And for our next story, we are heading to, once again, our friends at the OZ, OkanaganZ.com. Pity the bud tender, the question that annoys them the most, in a story written by my buddy David Wiley. There is nothing more eye-roll-inducing to bud tenders than when customers ask about THC potency. And apparently it happens a lot. <laughs> Sidebar? Absolutely, it happens a lot. <laughs> By far the biggest question we get, and this may actually come up in the story, so I, I may cut this out, but if not, highest THC, lowest price. Highest THC, lowest price. End of sidebar. It's the most asked and by far the most annoying query from customers, say Canadian frontline cannabis store employees, in a new survey by research firm Brightfield Group. To bud tenders, customers are a double-edged sword, they say. While many bud tenders cited the relationships they built with their customers as their favorite thing about their stores, difficult customers are one of the biggest pain points for bud tenders, says the report, which is a sample of the full 66-page document. It concludes that bud tenders have a major influence over customers, with 73% of customers buying recommended products. Bud tenders themselves tend to gravitate towards smaller craft brands, Bud tenders recognize that all brands are not the same and most are willing to go out of their way to find certain brands, says Brightfield. Bud tenders most value cannabis companies that are known for treating employees well, are authentic, and have a legacy of quality. Bud tenders say they'd be more likely to recommend certain brands if they had access to free sample products, training about the brand, or swag, it says. Brightfield surveyed more than 400 bud tenders across Canada, across more than 113 different stores, from October 25 to November 16, 2021. On cannabis regulations, more findings were bud tenders think the edible dosage cap should be changed along with the cap on flower quantity. They think they'd be able to do their jobs better if shoppers, and they, were allowed to see, smell products before buying them. And another sidebar, <laughs> this, all of these things are just so ridiculous. The 30 gram limit a store could not sell you more than 30 grams in one transaction. The fact that you can't see or smell your cannabis before you purchase it is absolutely insane. I can see there's going to be a bunch of diatribes for me in this story. <laughs> That's the end of that one. On Canadian brands, bud tenders' biggest issues with cannabis brands are low quality and inconsistent products. Excessive packaging and dry, not fresh bud were also frequently mentioned. On why they choose bud tending. Passion for cannabis is the driving force for the majority of bud tenders. On what sets a brand apart? Terpene profiles and price are most important to bud tenders in determining whether to purchase a new product, while effectiveness and taste, smell are most important when determining whether to purchase again. On learning about products, many bud tenders use sampling to learn about new products, which are samples purchased for them by brand reps themselves or other co-workers. And it is absolutely true that almost every bud tender is sampling the product at their own expense. And occasionally you get some freebie stuff, but it's it's a lot of work <laughs> to be a bud tender. And again, the story kind of intimated it. It didn't really detail it. But the biggest question we get asked is, I want the highest THC for the lowest price, whether it's a pre-roll or flower or whatever the case is. That It never fails to amuse me that those THC values keep on rocketing highward. I mean, now we're getting where 30%, 27, 29% is starting to be an, an acceptable average. What's happened to our cannabis? <laughs> there are still people who want THC in the, in the 14, 15, 16, even the 10, 12% range. And all of this high THC flower is just, it's affecting us all. That may be a bit of a digression from where the story was intended, but... I guess it's something that I felt that it was important to raise. So do you agree that bud tenders should be annoyed by the question of give me the highest THC at the lowest possible price <laughs> and then complain about the quality? It's a growing industry. And I guess if we don't complain, it's not going to get any better. THC, CBD, terpene profiles, what's in me? Oh, please explain to me. Go to the corner. Today on Cultivar Corner, we are looking at a company that's uh, trying to make a little noise. 
<laughs> I like the approach. If you've heard any of the previous cultivar corners, then you know that I kind of criticize cannabis companies for either having a poor web presence or an incomplete web presence or no web presence at all. Well, I'm happy to say, oh my goodness sakes, you'll understand what that my goodness sakes was about in a moment. I am talking about a company today called Three Saints. Now, you may have heard about them before. They used to be called Oh My, and they had a product called Oh My Kush Cookies. What we're doing on Cultivar Corner today is Three Saints Kush Cookies. And that Oh My Goodness was related to the fact that I dipped my nose in the oh <laughs> container to smell those 5.930% terpenes. <sighs> Think back. Think back to when we first started this podcast over three years ago now. We were starting to understand terpenes then. There, there were, if, if you look back into some of the earlier episodes, probably about episode six or seven, we started talking about terpenes and how they were impactful in, in our cannabis experience. But there wasn't a single container back then that had the amount of terpenes listed on the label. Nor did it have any of the other terpenes listed. Now, <laughs> in my constant criticism and acceptance of various cannabis companies, kudos to the folks at Three Saints for their Kush Cookies labels, which does proudly declare total terpenes 5.930%. <laughs> you may be able to guess where I'm going now. They don't actually list the actual terpenes on the jar. You've got to go to the website to figure out what those actual terpenes are. And, and we'll touch on those in a moment. <laughs> I, I guess they're trying anyways. But here's where I thought they really hit the mark. This is their about page at threesaints.ca. You know who you are. You smoked most of your life. Well, before it was legal. You wore the smell of cannabis to family dinners. You had the radical notion that you should have the freedom to enjoy cannabis on your own terms. With legal weed, you've been saying, cut the crap and show me the goods. You don't settle for the status quo. First, you demand more. Second, you go out and get it. Now, I'm not going to read the rest of it because they're, um, they're not paying me for the marketing of it. <laughs> but I was truly intrigued and pleased by the creativity they applied to take some of the old school thoughts that we all had, bring them over into the legal market, and talk about this new product that they have that is Kush Cookies. And now let's talk about the eighth of Kush cookies that I have. THC 23 to 28% on their website. This version, 26.6% THC. Now we've already mentioned that 5.93% terpenes. And what that does to the aroma when you open the jar. Now they lose a couple of points for a plastic container that the cannabis is sitting in. We pull out the buds, and I have to say, this was packaged on September September 12th, last year. It's reasonable, I guess, what, three months ago? I've used the phrase a few times. How do they get the nugs so nuggy? Uh, these nugs are really nuggy. <laughs> and, and by nuggy, I mean really, really tight. I've never been able to get the cannabis that I have grown at home through my cure, curing process get to this level of tightness. Attractive buds, not huge. My three and a half is made up of you know, probably a couple of reasonably good sized buds and, and then a bunch of popcorn buds to make up the mix of it. Pull out the jeweler's loop and let's take a look at some of the trichome fields we hope to see. Oh, Oh, wow, I haven't seen this much amber in a long, long time in the butt I'm looking at. Oh, yeah, lots of deep, dark amber trichomes, which could be one of the reasons why people have been telling me this is a pretty heavy-hitting indica. Mm. Now, the dominant terpenes carry offline. Which makes sense. There's definitely some spiciness when you open that jar. Mm, some myrcene. So bring those earthy tones in there. Limonene and linalool. Boy, you talk about a terpene profile that's just 
designed for me. That would be it. Caryophylline, myrcene, limonene, and linalool. Mm. So now, let me read you the rest of their marketing piece. This is actually on the site for the eighth of the Kush Cookies. You'll whisper its name in reverential tones after this bud passes your lips. Kush Cookies. Potent, terpene-rich, dense, and sticky buds. Okay. As I do, <laughs> I like to call out marketing. So if I have a line that says dense and sticky buds, that should stick to my finger, I'm thinking, should it not? There's a minor amount of stick. Let me try it with a slightly smaller bud and see if I have a little less weight, if it'll if it'll get that stickiness to it. Okay, a little bit. Eh, okay, I'm going to go 50-50 with you on the rich, dense, and sticky buds. There is a bit of stickiness there. Does it increase when I grind it up a little bit? Let's take a peek. Yeah, okay, it does a bit. See, I'm perfectly willing to change my mind on a topic if I'm proven to you wrong. So I was going to question and challenge that line about the dense and sticky buds, but when you do break it up, it gets out of that nuggy nugginess, and it actually does have a fair amount of stickiness to it. Mmm, sticky enough that it sticks to your fingers. This is a rare lineage of GMO cookies and OZ Kush that delivers highly aromatic notes of savory herbs and spicy earth with undertones of citrus and musk. Now, I think we've already kind of touched on that. Definitely got the spicy earth, the citrus and the musk from the limonene, and a little bit of floral notes from that little lul. At 26.6% THC, 5.93% terpenes. Wonderful aroma. Let's see what it tastes like. This is Three Saints Kush Cookies. Oh, spicy notes off the joint. Moving to a bit of those earthy tones. Smooth. How's our ash? Looking pretty good. Nice and white. I forgot to turn on the vaporizer. I've not corrected that while I carry on with the joint. Because <laughs> I have a sneaking suspicion the taste is really going to come to the fore when we put this in the vaporizer. I had a buddy at work who tried this, and Jericho tells me that it was a pretty heavy hitter for him. After a hit on his bong, that was pretty well it. <laughs> now, he may not have the lineage of cannabis consumption that I do, But he basically threw out the challenge that he thought this would be a great indica for me to try. And he commented on the happy eyes. He didn't call them that. He basically pointed to his eyes and said, right here. <laughs> and for me, that's happy eyes. I think that's hit number four off the joint. I really do like the taste. And if I'm saying all that off the joint, that's a pretty good sign. And again, nice and clean, nice white ash, burning evenly, not getting any canoeing going on. Joint is smoking freely. And I look down and I see, lo and behold, it's time for some two-fisted activity. I now hold the vaporizer in my hand with Kush cookies. And let's see what it tastes like. Oh my goodness. I think I know why the company used to be called Oh My. And they were sitting around in the office and somebody pulled out their vaporizer and threw some of those cook Kush cookies in it and they went, Oh my. Mmm. And I will repeat again. Oh, that's one of the best tastes I've had in a long time in the vaporizer. Spicy, earthy, citrusy, a little bit of musk from the 
I don't know, from something. Oh, and there they are. The infamous and often referred to happy eyes. <laughs> I love them. For me, when I find a cultivar that gives me the happy eyes, I am well and truly stoned. And I continue to imbibe on the Crafty Plus. And go for even deeper and deeper happy eyes. Mm. Oh, a nice little rush. Now I can kind of feel it moving into a little bit of a body stone. Definitely. <laughs> I love how these things happen sometimes. Just, just felt that, that little crest, that crescendo, and then that, that kind of nice, easy slide into that. Ah, yeah, I'm stoned, and and it's and it's a nice, relaxing body stone. Just exactly what I was looking for at the end of my week. Nice. Well, Three Saints, I think you've done a good job with your Kush cookies. Good job on your website. You could take a bit of constructive criticism and include the terpenes on the label because you've got the room for it. But you've done a pretty nice job with Kush cookies. Happy eyes indeed. Our best intentions don't always result in our best actions, do they? <laughs> I start with that as a way of explanation for the fact that I did intend to do an in-depth, all-inclusive cultivar corner talking about what I promoted at the end of the last episode, which was the 12 joints of Christmas from Citizen's Dash. I had intended to do so. And in fact, I had started. I remember recording the first segment where I started with their first pre-roll, which was Interstellar. And the first thing I realized as I started to dive into these 12 joints of Christmas was I was going to have to do an awful lot of work to find out the details of each of these strains. It was not readily available. That's one thing that I found a little annoying. And the next is, whether it was a stoned moment or a computer blip, or whatever the case is, I just went to look for that piece that I had recorded that started it all, talking about Interstellar, and it looks like it didn't get intersaved. <laughs> so it's gone. <clears throat> and since that was really the only working piece that I had, what you're experiencing now is a recreation of the experience of Citizen Stash, The Twelve Joints of Christmas. My overall impression... Meh, meh, is about as excited as I'm going to get. Uh, I honestly wasn't that thrilled with it. There wasn't a single one that created a stellar moment, interesting enough, since the first one was called Interstellar. Nothing really stuck out. In fact, the biggest issue I had, I think with every single one of them, all 12, was by the time I got down to the bottom, Now, now understand these are the... The standard pre-rolls that are out these days, the 3.5.35 grams, in that cone, thin little filter, and in a long, rather cardboardish-like filter. But I found every single one of them I had trouble finishing because they got so damn hot at the bottom. With that, I don't... Why did we start using cones? Somebody please explain that to me. <laughs> I was explaining this to somebody the other day. I roll a joint and I roll it, you know, pretty straight across. And it doesn't get hot when I get to the end of it. It's exactly the same at the end of the joint as it is at the front of the joint. But that's not the case with these pre-rolls. I had trouble finishing each and every one. Now, that might also be some indication of how effective they were because I finished each 
and every one of the 12 joints of Christmas. Now, did I do them in succession? No. Did I do them over the course of one particular day? No. It was spread out, in fact, in my hand, as I record this particular episode, and we are now well into January. Well, not well into January. We've just started January. And I'm trying the last piece of my 12 joints of Christmas. I suppose if you did actually count the days from when I first opened these, it would be about 12 days. <laughs> but I, I'm in a bit of a diatribe, and I guess there's a bit of credit to Citizen Stash for that, because the last one that was here was Diesel Tonic. I hadn't touched that yet. And as I already commented, I found them really, really hot uh, in the pre-rolls that existed. So I actually cut it open. Now, I had heard that there were others that had done re reviews and had purported to have found some stems and such inside the joints. I didn't find that. It was pretty dry weed. But I decided to cut the last one open and re-roll it so that it, it didn't get so hot and painful to finish it. And, and that's what I have been smoking in a pre-roll that I did. And this was the Diesel Tonic THC at 18.9%. And it has given me a bit of a buzz. As you can hear, there's a, a bit of stone in my voice, <laughs> which is nice. So I'm not going to say that I didn't get a buzz off of them because I did. Uh, there were a couple that I, that I, I kind of found nice. Sunday Driver was good. Uh, the Ice Cream Gelato, uh, Island Pink was good. Death Bubba. So there were some interesting strains, and I, and I was trying to figure out, did they intend to go through the spectrum with these 12 joints of Christmas? Because it started with Interstellar, which I believe was a sativa. Kind of hit into the middle with Cake Crasher and Stonewall kind of leaning into those 50-50 hybrids, and then finishing off with Island Pink, Death Bubba, and Mac 1, typically on the Indica side. So it, it almost seemed that way, that we were starting Sativa, working through some hybrids, and then ending up in the Indica. Maybe what I was supposed to do was what I had envisioned and kind of jokingly said when I started down the path, the 12 joints of Christmas was going to be the 12 hours of Christmas. Now, maybe if I had taken that approach, I would have... <laughs> I don't know, got higher, achieved a greater high or, or known it. Perhaps I wouldn't have been able to tell the, the different strains apart. I don't know. <laughs> but would I buy them next year? Yeah, probably not. Unless I had heard that they had uh, gone through a redesign and weren't in that stupid little cone design and would be an easier smoke, then perhaps. I don't think it was worth the price. Can't honestly remember what I paid, but it was probably overpaid. And... It didn't really make my Christmas, shall we say. So Citizen Stash, the 12 joints of Christmas, great idea, good marketing. Perhaps the execution, not quite what we envisioned. And I think they also needed to put more detail on the packaging because that was, again, my other frustration is I had to, I had to look and find, and I couldn't find on the Citizen Stash site, I had to look and find the details on these various strains. So that was frustrating in and of itself. You can come to your own conclusion if it's still around next year. I'm not sure if it will be or whether others will enter the market. Now, I think it makes sense if somebody were to come up with a uh, cannabis advent type of calendar where you had a new discovery for those first few days. That would be a cool idea. But try a different, try a different packaging. Don't stick it in those stupid cones that get so hot and just make the experience not as pleasant as it should be. That's my advice for any manufacturer considering coming up with something for next Christmas. Now's the time to start planning it. From the Cannabis Infused Studio in the Clouds, this is the Cannabis Podcast. Oh, finally. Someone again mentioned Cannabis Infused Studio. So let me make sure that is an accurate statement. It is now accurate. And for more accuracy, let's go to leafly.ca in a story by David Brown on how to get weed in every province in Canada, and since we have now identified that there are 10 provinces and three territories in Canada, how do you buy cannabis in Canada? Well, it changes across the country. Where to buy weed in Ontario? Ontario Cannabis Store, provincial and online only, in a cannabis private retail store with some delivery options. Ontario. 
Canada's largest cannabis market with 15 million people has one of the most diverse retail systems. There are more than a 1,000 approved private retail stores in Ontario, with new stores continuing to be approved. If you want to buy cannabis in Ontario, you can shop online at the government-run Ontario Cannabis Store, in-store at a privately-owned retailer, or order directly from a private retailer. Where to buy weed in British Columbia? BC Cannabis Store, provincial, online only, in a cannabis retail store, private, and some delivery options. In British Columbia, you can purchase cannabis through privately operated retail stores, publicly owned BC Cannabis stores, as well as online from the BC Cannabis store. The majority of retailers are privately owned, with only about 30 of the approximately 400 stores in the province being a BC Cannabis store. Over a 1,000 stores in Ontario and in 400 in BC. In July 2021, BC announced they were allowing private retailers to engage in-home delivery of cannabis products, and one retail christened their first delivery in a motorcycle and sidecar. Where to buy weed in Alberta? Alberta Cannabis, provincial, online only, and in cannabis private retail stores. Alberta has a system with over 700 private retail stores and growing, and manages all online sales through a provincial store. However, the provincial government recently introduced legislation that, if passed, will end online sales of cannabis through the Alberta Gaming Liquor and Cannabis, AGLC, allowing private retailers to take on those services. Where to buy weed in Manitoba and Saskatchewan? In a cannabis retail, private store, or delivery. Manitoba and Saskatchewan only have private retail cannabis stores, with over 100 locations in each province. They are the only provinces that have never managed online sales themselves, opting to have individual stores choose to manage that option. Cannabis retailers are permitted to deliver products via their own staff or even through third-party delivery services, which means in Manitoba and Saskatchewan, you can order weed like pizza without ever having to leave the house or waiting in the postal service. At the moment, Manitoba is also considering legislation that would shift the liability for that cannabis to the third-party delivery agency, rather than the cannabis retailer. Where do you buy weed in Newfoundland? In a private cannabis retail store and some delivery options. Newfoundlanders can buy cannabis from several dozen private cannabis stores or through Cannabis NL. The province began allowing retailers to offer delivery as an option for consumers earlier this year and also allows retailers to operate a drive through window. Now that's a cool idea. Where do you buy weed in Quebec, New Brunswick, Nova Scotia, and PEI? Cannabis retail, stores, provincial. No private stores and no delivery. Mail only. Quebec, New Brunswick, Nova Scotia, and PEI each have only government-run retail stores. And the only option for delivery is mail-ordered from the online provincial store in each province. The SQDC in Quebec, Cannabis NB in New Brunswick, and NSLC in Nova Scotia, and PEI Cannabis. New Brunswick's government recently announced legislation that if passed will allow for privately owned cannabis stores to operate in the province as well. New Brunswick also announced their own cannabis farm gate program earlier this year, with two now currently operating in the province. Consumers can buy locally made cannabis products as well as seeds and plants at participating locations. Cannabis in the territories has several different approaches. In the Yukon, consumers can purchase from a handful of private stores, Until recently, online sales were managed exclusively by the territory, but new legislation was recently passed that's opening up that option to private retail stores. In the Northwest Territories, you can buy your cannabis from one of six privately owned stores. Online sales are managed through Relief NT. However, in-person deliveries are still not allowed in the territory. Nunavut is the only jurisdiction in Canada that allows residents to order directly from cannabis producers. They must be approved by the territorial government, and currently there are only two approved producers. Nunavut also currently has one private retail store, which also offers online shopping and mail delivery. Overall, brick-and-mortar stores dominate cannabis sales, with the vast majority of purchases in every province coming from in-person visits. Based on provincial reports, online sales tend to be a small portion of overall sales, sometimes only a few percentage points. Farmgate sales are still quite new, making it too early to gauge annual sales figures. Canada's retail system will continue to evolve. Although store numbers in several provinces continue to grow, there are expectations of closures and consolidation in some. How cannabis is sold is largely up to the provinces, and each region will continue to build systems that fit their own unique identities 
And as we've discussed before on the Cannabis Podcast, in some markets, the saturation level is going to mean that not all the stores can survive. So it's an ever-growing and an ever-evolving culture. It never fails to fascinate the world of cannabis in Canada. And to finish off this episode, we are going to a site called thecanigma.com. Now, I hope I pronounced that right. Obviously, it's based on cannabis, so the canigma, I'm assuming, is all about stigma. So can igma.com is where you're going to find this story. And of course, the link is back at cannabispodcast.com. This is related to the fact that we're in a new year. We're hoping 2022 is going to be a better year than the last two have been. And it always seems as we move from one year to the next, people want to take on New Year's resolutions to improve their lives in, in some way, shape, or form. So from the canigma.com, here are 10 simple cannabis-related resolutions you need to start 2022 on a high. Creating cannabis-focused resolutions symbolizes a fun, feel-good way to shake up your perspective on the new year ahead. For many, cannabis is already part of a well-being or self-care regimen, and creating mindful resolutions can further enhance each person's relationship with this special plant. Resolutions can nudge your cannabis use into healthier territory or encourage you to dip your toes into trying new things. Number one, try dry herb vaping. Cannabis delivery formats have advanced in leaps and bounds in recent years. Until recently, a homemade joint was the only available option if you wanted to inhale cannabis. Nowadays, however, options abound. Dry herb vaping is rapidly emerging as one of the least toxic consumption methods. In comparison with smoking, the benefits are myriad. They include, for starters, dried unprocessed cannabis can be heated to a temperature so it doesn't burn. Heating cannabis to a lower temperature minimizes the production of tar and other carcinogenic chemicals. Another advantage to vaping is that vapor rather than smoke is produced, which is less harmful for the lungs. And finally, vaping makes it easier to get precision doping. Doping. <laughs> well, that may be true. Some would put it that way. But how about it actually says, finally, vaping makes it easier to get precision dosing. If you haven't yet tried dry herb vaping, 2022 is the year to give it a go. Get creative while high is number two. Cannabis has long been celebrated for its ability to spark creativity. Maya Angelou, Steve Jobs, and Carl Sagan experimented with cannabis to tap into their creative reserves and explore avenues to refresh their perspectives. Increasingly, entrepreneurs are turning to cannabis to generate new ideas. What's more, there's scholarly evidence that cannabis may contribute to unleashing creative genius. The plant boosts blood flow to the brain's frontal lobe, the region associated with creativity. A 15 milligram dose of THC edibles in non-regular cannabis users was found in one study to improve verbal fluency. Great news for aspiring writers. Other researchers have found that dose makes a difference. Heavy hits of weed can actually impair divergent thinking. So remember that a little goes a long way. If you're curious about dabbing in your creative side, try painting, sculpting, writing, knitting while under the influence. Number three, use tobacco alternatives in your spliffs. Well, I'm going to actually split this one, frankly, because I don't use any tobacco with my cannabis. If you want to, you go ahead and read that part of the article. I'm not going to promote it. Number four, integrate cannabis into your wellness routine. Cannabis is quickly cultivating a reputation as a plant that boosts wellness. Essentially, wellness embodies principles such as self-care, self-healing, and the pursuit of an optimal state of health and well-being. Contemporary cannabis users turn to the plant to ease stress and tension, promote sleep, improve focus, elevate experiences of intimacy, or enjoy social gatherings. Elevating our human experience in 2022 is definitely something we can all get behind. Number five, eat healthier munchies. Cannabis goes hand in hand with food. The unique effect of the plant on the body's endocannabinoid system means that weed can help stimulate appetite, leading to a serious case of the munchies. An edible or toke to on a joint often sees many of us reaching for deeply satiating, fat-dense foods such as slices of pizza or blocks of chocolate. Let 2022 be the year you cleanse your pantry of hyper-processed foods, replacing them with more nutritious alternative sources of fat, nutrition, natural nut butters, handfuls of trail mix, avocados, hummus with raw vegetables, and smoothies all represent excellent, 
nutrient-dense options to address an attack of the munchies. Number six, whip up healthier homemade edibles. Similarly, if you currently make edibles that tend towards the unhealthier end of the spectrum, make a resolution to try out healthier edible recipes. There are plentiful recipes available online for wholesome plant-based takes on brownies, cookies, mousses, and cheesecakes. The vast majority of the recipes can be utilized with an infused oil replacement to keep your dose constant but improve the quality of the food you're consuming. Number seven, consider a diet that supports your endocannabinoid system. Speaking of food and diet, why not set a resolution to incorporate more foods that boost your endocannabinoid system into your diet? Recent research suggests that the endocannabinoid system plays a critical role in our general health, thanks to its influence on systemic energy metabolism, inflammation, and brain health. Foods that can support endocannabinoid system function include balanced levels of omega-3 and omega-6 polyunsaturated fatty acids. Ironically, hemp is one of the few foods that contain a perfect ratio of omega-3 to omega-6. It's important to note that most people consume an excessive amount of omega-6, but an insufficient supply of omega-3. You can also support EZS Health with other omega-rich foods such as flax seeds, walnuts, algae, and chia seeds. Vegetables and fruits that are high in fiber and fermented foods that contain probiotics can also boost your ECS. Fiber and probiotics are both instrumental to good gut health. There's robust evidence to suggest that gut health and ECS function are intricately linked. 8. Work out with cannabis. It may sound counterintuitive, but training or working out while high can be a game-changing experience. Athletes who regularly go running under the influence of THC report enhanced bodily sensation and awareness, and the same goes for other disciplines such as yoga and resistance training. Individuals who practice Brazilian jiu-jitsu share that the cannabinoid can help with the problem-solving aspects of the practice. If you're not up for experimenting with intoxicating cannabinoids like THC, consider trying CBD. This non-intoxicating cannabinoid has also been linked to enhanced workouts. There's evidence that CBD may ease inflammation, accelerate recovery from skeletal injury, and help with pre-performance nerves or anxiety. Number 9. Learn how to grow your own cannabis. Few things are more empowering than growing your own food and witnessing the passage from seed to table. If you prize self-sufficiency and place importance on the providence of your cannabis, why not try cultivating it yourself? Weed isn't called weed for nothing. With a little knowledge, preparation, and the right conditions, cannabis is fairly straightforward to grow. There are numerous benefits to growing your own cannabis, the foremost advantage being that you can control the entire process. With spring or rainwater, organic fertilizer, and full sunlight, you can produce exceptionally high-quality weed. Canisers 2022 is your chance to get your hand in the earth and cultivate some homegrown goodness. And number 10, keep your smoking equipment clean. As a, as a sidebar, I, when I used to use a bong, <laughs> I did not keep it very clean. <laughs> End of sidebar. Regular cannabis smokers will already be acutely aware of the consequences of dirty, neglected pipes, bongs, and dab rigs. Buildup from the consecutive smoking sessions accumulates over time, affecting your equipment and potentially your health. Inhaling from a pipe lined with black gunk is never an experience to savor. More problematically, this residue can increase your exposure to carcinogen, detrimentally affect the flavor of your cannabis, or even catch fire. It's essential to learn how to clean your equipment and commit to regular cleaning sessions in 2022. Say, aim for once a week. Alternatively, if your current bong is too far gone and beyond cleaning, or you could just use an upgrade, maybe it's time to treat yourself to a new bong. So here's to a happy, healthy 2022 for all of us and plentiful supplies of high-quality cannabis. Now there's some good thoughts from the Canigma.com for a great cannabis year in 2022. If you ever have any comments on anything you hear on the Cannabis Podcast, please send a note to info at CannabisPodcast.com. If you liked what you hear and you feel so inclined, feel free to head to buymeacoffee.com slash Cannabis Podcast and buy me a doobie. That wraps it up for episode 88 of the Cannabis Podcast. From the Cannabis Infused Studio, high above the Okanagan Valley, this was the Cannabis Podcast. Cannabis Podcast.